All right, so we just finished up part two of Craig Rochelle's Lead Like It Matters series. And he goes over uh, some more of the eight paradoxes of leadership. So to start, I want to go ahead and recap those. So the eight paradoxes of leadership are leadership paradoxes that are contradictory qualities that together create an undeniable leadership impact. And they are being confident while being humble, being driven while being healthy, being focused and flexible, being optimistic while being a realist, being direct and being kind, empowering and controlling, being urgent and patient, and being frugal and abundant. So today, uh, Craig was going over being empowering while being controlling. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like that word controlling. Uh, that's like number one thing that I think most entrepreneurs have two sides of. One, they want control. Two, they don't want to be controlled. So when you're a leader, you have to be empowering and controlling because we as leaders can control too much. And when we control too much, we become the cap of the capacity of our team. We become the lid of our team. And he said, you know, your potential isn't determined by what you do. Your potential is determined by the leaders that you empower. So guys, an important thing to think about today is who in your organization are you empowering? Who are you training up to be that next layer of leadership, that next level of leadership that goes and takes more and more people into your organization? He said, most leaders focus on finding the right strategy instead of focusing on finding and empowering the right leaders. So guys, today, take a look at your team. Who are those emerging new leaders? And then start plugging in with them and showing them that they have the leadership capacity to take on the next level of leadership. You know, he said, your true impact is what happens in your absence. So as a leader, you know if you have layered leadership when things continue on or even progress and get better when you're not around. So controlling is not always bad, but being strategically controlling is important. So think about it this way. If you're over-controlling, you're the limiting of your organization. So if you're, if you're trying to do everything and tell everybody how to do everything, your team will only grow to as much as you can control. But when you give control and leadership over to other peoples, it expands. So it's one of those things where you set the tone for your team. You can tell them what to do and why to do it, but leave the how up to them. So for your business, what that sounds like is, you know, four and a friend. We tell you that to get to the next level, to get to promotions, to get to bonuses. The foundation of that is for and a friend. You sign four loyal customers and help one person, one friend join your team and you teach them the same thing. So that is the, the how or the what to do. The how, how you do that is up to you. Are you going to go do expos? Are you going to do stuff on social media? Are you going to go out and knock on doors? You know, guys, the how is completely up to you. You get free range of how to do it. You know, it's not like a franchise where they tell you every single thing that you have to do. They have all the rules. They have all the bylaws. They have the control of what creates the output. What we do is we give you the roadmap and say how you get to your success and your goal is up to you. The next thing that he says is leaders are urgent and patient which doesn't seem to work together, but it absolutely does. He said, the secret to getting things done is action. We talk about it all the time. Action, 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 action. How do you get over fear? Action. How do you get results? It's not talk, it's action. He said, leaders with urgent drive produce the right actions to create the right results. Leaders aren't always right, but they're always moving in the right direction because they're taking action. You would rather be wrong by taking action than be wrong by not taking action. You know, action closes the gap between where you want to be and where you currently are. 
all of the right actions put you in the right direction. But small actions with small errors can be corrected. Even big errors can give you a chance to turn around if you do them quickly enough. So when we talk about failing big, failing fast, failing often, the reason why we say that is because you learn in the process. So if you are not taking action, you are possibly not learning what not to do. You're just not having or getting because you're not doing. So it's important to take action quickly, constantly, and go for it because of the fact that when you do make a mistake, you have the faster ability to recover on it. He said, many leaders with a walk it, talk it, think it faster because they have the idea that if they go towards it, they will achieve it. You know, urgency for us as human beings is not a default mode. Complacency is. You know, think about uh, when you were in school and you had a project due. You normally had advance notice of the project months in advance. You know, they told you this is what's going to be due this semester. And here you are on the last night before it's due, doing all of it because you didn't do any of it, the first part of it because we are default to complacency. What we tend to do is the easy thing, and the easy thing isn't always necessarily the right thing. So what great leaders do is they look at what is necessary and they do it right away. And he also says, as an organization grows, your bias towards action becomes a bias towards discussion. So think about that. Are you talking about doing more than you are doing? Again, are you talking about doing more than you are doing? Leaders have to fight for the speed and agility of action because what happens over time is your team starts to slow down. The bigger that your team gets, the harder it is to move them. So what you have to do is, again, go back and pick out specific areas in your organization and work towards keeping that speed and that agility and that momentum going in that specific spot. Because when you have an organization that's large, you may not be able to move the whole thing like you did before when it was smaller. So if you break your organization into smaller groups, you can manage the momentum better. Okay, where are we at? Oh my gosh. Uh, so we got to talk about the patience portion of it because you know there's action and then there's patience. And he said, patient isn't the absence of action. Patience is understanding the right timing. The key to balancing a bias for acting quickly is knowing the wisdom of when to do it. He said, and what are the four places that you should be strategically patient in? Well, number one, when you're developing people. You know, you want people to jump leaps and bounds in their growth in their training process. And he says, you don't want to push people too fast because when you push people too fast, they either just don't get it and fall away or they get burnt out and don't want to do anything. So you need to give them the time to grow, have urgency in developing people, but don't push them past their own capacity. He said, the other thing you need to be patient about is when you say what you say, you need to be wise when you speak, you need to know when to say yes and when to say no. Also, you need to know when to speak and when to shut up. That is a hard thing for leaders to do because leaders love the sound of their own voice. Number three is when you act. He said, a great idea at the wrong time is still not a great idea. A great idea patiently thought over and applied at the right time becomes a great idea. I mean, think about how many great ideas there were that have never turned into anything because the timing was wrong. When you are waiting on results is number four. Sometimes you plant a seed and you have to wait for the harvest. You know, think about bamboo. Bamboo is one of those crazy things that God put out there that when you plant it for so long, it doesn't grow. It's, it's like six years of barely any growth. And then on that sixth year, all of a sudden it shoots up 11 feet in such a short amount of time. 
So when you are waiting on results, you have to be patient to let the process happen. I said it last night. I was like, you know, you're in charge of planting the seed. God is the one that waters and brings the sun. Those are the things that you can't control. So the things that you can't control, you have to be patient. So be urgent in the things that you can control, but the things that are out of your control, obviously you need to pray about and have patience for. So one thing that he said is don't be afraid to ex embrace your extremes. You know, the things that we talked about were the difference in the extremes that great leaders have. So find out which of the ones are your strong ones and focus on growing those. He said, don't try to be great at a lot of things. Be great at a few focused things because I would rather have people that are great at being focused at specific things and having specific strengths and skills than you know the jack of all trades, master of none. So guys, today, go out and find your greatness in your extremes Start moving into those and applying those into your team and look for them in your team and helping them develop them so that you can create the momentum and the layered leadership in your team that you've been looking for. Guys, I hope this helped go out and make it an amazing week. And I hope your week is as awesome as you are. See you guys.